My name is David Corbett. I'm an actor, musician, and vintage motorcycle fanatic. My love affair with these beautiful machines has lasted 25 years, and there are many that I love. What is it about motorcycles, especially vintage ones? Here at Verrills in Handcross, West Sussex, there are some real beauties. Wow. The Bruff Superior, Rolls Royce of motorcycles. T.E. Lawrence or Lawrence of Arabia's favorite. A 1955 Triumph Trophy, 500cc, James Dean's choice. A 1950 Triumph Thunderbird, Marlon Brando's choice in the wild one. A 1962 Triumph Trophy 650cc, one of Steve McQueen's many. In this series, I'm gonna track down a few famous folks who are also crazy about vintage bikes like me. I wanna find out what drives this obsession and whether us old bike nuts have something in common. Today, we're off to meet Matt Bardock, you may know him from his many TV appearances, such as Jeff in Casualty. Hello, mate. Hello, welcome, mate. welcome. A beautiful day for Yeah, it's fab, yeah. So, welcome. Thank you. Beautiful house. So, a fellow lover of British motorcycles and yeah. vintage motorcycles, yeah. what are you going to be riding today? Well, I'm going to be riding this today. You want to come and have a look? Wow. Well, yeah. My favourite, favourite, favourite bike of all time. This is my 1966 Triumph Bonneville T120 TT. Twin carbs. Uh, bigger pistons, 10 to 1 pistons, shorter pipes, and this particular bike uh, went out to Johnson Motors in the 60s. Oh, right. It was exported yeah. over there and then raced in the TT in their steeplechase series. Yeah. And then came back somewhere in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. She's really beautiful. Yeah, I haven't really done much to it. She's really gorgeous. I love the shape of the tank. It's just a beautiful shape of curves, and I, it makes me want to lick it. Do you ever get the feeling that you want to lick? That bike? No, no, I don't. You don't? No, I don't. Oh. I don't get that feeling. No. Okay, so should we go for a ride? Yeah. No, let's do that. Let's go and just grab my lid. Right. Okay. Don't lick it. Of course not. Yeah, ready when you are. Yeah. <clears throat> ready? So, Matthew, Matt, can I call you Matt? Yeah, Matt, Matt's fine. Matty, can I no, call you No, 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 Matt's fine, just stay with Matt's fine. So there's a lot of beautiful machines out there, beautiful motorcycles, vintage ones. It makes me wonder why uh, guys choose to invest in the ones that they do. Why did you choose that beautiful Triumph? What uh, made you? I think because when I was growing up, the images that I had of motorcycles were of those 60s desert races. I was fascinated yeah. by that. And they all rode their style of, that style of bike. Uh, and for me, it's the most stripped down, pared down. The bare necessity. Yeah, absolutely that. And also when I, was when I used to draw pictures at school, they were always just two wheels and a tank and a seat. You know, and, and that as soon as I saw an early Triumph, I knew that was, that was a motorcycle I wanted to own. And then, you know, did a bit of research and then knew that it was the TT that I wanted to own. So, so what is it about, the aesthetically, about the classic with vintage bikes? That I always come back to that, always. Whenever, even when I go for, you know, I rode a couple of new bikes recently. I read the new Z900RS, the new Honda, uh, CB1000R. You know, they're all great. They're all lovely, lovely bikes. They're really capable, extremely fast, you know, frighteningly fast. But it isn't really about speed anymore for me. It's, it is about... It's just about that feeling, 
yeah. and it's a feeling, and, you and know, the smell. yeah, the smell and the fact that they're temperamental, they're like, you know, yeah. they get a bit grumpy, they don't always want to start. Like you know, a beautiful girlfriend. Yeah. They can get really grumpy and they don't start. Exactly. Uh, you know, and, and, or maybe they and do you start. You have, to, you have to tickle them a bit. You know? Yeah, you have to, you have to talk nicely to them, don't you? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's that. It's a lifestyle thing, actually. Yeah. You suddenly realise it isn't just a mode of transport. Yeah, it's a lifestyle thing. So it's the aesthetics, the smell, the feel, the, the engine noise as well. Yeah, it? all of that. I mean, I think it's just... You know, when I was a kid growing up, in the 70s, I was surrounded by that. I was surrounded by motorcycles. You couldn't really avoid them. Two strokes, triples. Yeah. You know, two stroke triples. Yeah. You know, four cylinder motorcycles. You know, the smell of Castrol. Yes, a certain smell. And there's that, and yeah, and the look, and some of those guys were so cool, you know. From yeah. so when you're, you know, seven years old, and you're watching, you know, a good guy in bell bottom flares, you know, <laughs> roaring around on a Z1, you know, yeah. it, it stays with you, you know. And that's that's stayed with me all my life. In fact, I don't actually ever remember not not wanting to have motorcycles yeah. around me. I like to just go and stand in the garage and be yeah. among them. You know, I don't have to be riding them, but as long as they're around yeah. me makes me feel good you know, I, yeah. I know it's the same for you yeah since I was a child so I'm going to ask you what are your favourite lucky seven and what I mean by that <laughs> nothing to do with dwarves but your lucky seven your favourite gloves helmet t-shirt jeans jacket boots and glasses glasses easy glasses is easy one these are my favourite these are uh the Steve McQueen on Mars, these are your personal fold ups. And they are, yeah, they're fabulous and the lenses are great and they're functional. The design's great, they work well. I, I, I tend to wear those all the time. I always wear these boots, the Red Wing boots, uh, because they're comfortable and they're great and they last and you can just get them resold. Very nice. It's nice and easy. Yeah. So, this is a, a, a Rolex uh, Submariner. Constantly wear that. What uh, about your t shirt there? I like a bit of Johnson. Johnson Motors stuff. Johnson Motors, beautiful stuff. I'm actually wearing a Johnson Motors oh, yeah. t-shirt oh, myself. Look, you always look very sharp. Like We've got so much in common. Yeah. Jeans. Uh, well, I like these. These are these. I can't remember what these are, but they're nice. They're nice. Can you stand up and I'll tell you what they are? Can, I, can you do a twirl? They are Edwin's. Edwin's. I like these. Very nice. Japanese denim. Right? Beautiful. Uh, bit of Japanese denim. Jacket. Favorite jacket. Oh, when you're riding your bike. This, uh, my trusty old bell staff. And it's, I bought this in Barcelona about 20 odd years ago. Yeah. Um, I've been everywhere in that thing. All weathers. I've That's got other jackets. I wear leather jackets and stuff, yeah. but I always come back to that. Yeah. Uh, gloves? Uh, gloves really well. I can lay my hands on. These are, I don't know, those are kind of Lyman's doe skin, you know. I don't really think about gloves. Yeah. Helmet? I never really cracked the helmet. I because I've had a few machines and different styles. You need one for I've had fast a fast bike as well. Exactly. Yeah. I wear a belt, but it's all right. It's a little bit. Yeah. I, I'm still on the I'm still on the hunt actually for a, the helmet. Yeah, it's not easy to find actually one that actually protects you and looks good at the yeah. same time. Yeah, and, and just you know it, don't you? You know when yeah. you just go that that is it, and I haven't actually found yeah. it, so I'm still experimenting. I wear this one. It's a Davida. This does not really save your life, but it looks good. It looks great. And it's got my name in it, David, which is very important. It's a beautiful thing. I love those, Old but school. I don't know what, you know, you wouldn't want to fall off in it, but no, you know, no. good enough for my hair. You have to just not fall off it, <laughs> and then you'll be fine. What about your favorite movie? Or let's say your favorite motorcycle movie. Is there a couple? Or? Yeah, yeah, I mean, are there, there are, a, you know, there's a few. On any Sunday, you can watch that. Oh. You just watch that on a loop, can't you? I could watch that on any Sunday. I know, you know, I, know I, could, I could watch Malcolm Smith ride, you know, on, yeah. on any Sunday. Ever. On his Husqvarna. But, but, you know, it's got to be, it has to be, it has to be The Great Escape. The it? Great Escape. It has to be. It has to be that for so many reasons. Yeah, why? Uh, well, I'm a massive Steve McQueen fan, but that goes without saying, because most people are, really. But because the, I always want him to escape. I mean, I remember that film being yeah. on in every, every Christmas since I was a kid, and yeah. even now... I know the result of that, you know, you know, that he doesn't make the, you yeah. know, make the jump on the I still want to believe yeah. him that he escapes. I still want him I, to get I'm away. exactly the same. You think this year he might actually he do might it. He might do it, yeah. Maybe they recut the endings. Yeah. So he actually and, and also there's so many cool performances in that. There's so many cool blokes in that. There's so many cool moments in that. Yeah. It's probably like the coolest film. Yeah. So I think it's got to be that. Right. So the favourite scene in that movie is which one? 
I have a few, but I think ultimately it has to be the bike chase at the end, and, and it has to be it has to be the jump. The jump. Yeah. I mean, there's two. There's three moments that burn in my brain. One where he leaps out initially at the beginning when the Queen jumps over the bank and he's got the, yeah. he's, he's just taken the German uniform and lands the bike and then takes off. Right. There's a scene where he swishes a, a fuel around in a tank, yeah. and then there's the jump. You know. So why don't we take another look at that scene? from a slightly different angle and see if it's as good as we actually remember it being. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, go on. Okay, cool. Hey! Papers! Papers! Really hurt, you idiot! Oh, shice! Hurt, you idiot! Well, there you well, that, that was uh, an epic jump. That was the most amazing. I don't remember it being actually that scary. Uh, the German officer was much more prominent than I remember as well. He's was different. He was uh, slightly, you know, it's amazing what you forget, isn't he? How different, do you think? I, I would have said he was much more camp than, oh, yeah. than yeah. Uh, you know. I, uh, camp in a kind of scary way or? Uh, no, just more camp and camp. more theatrical, you know. Right. But, uh, and, uh, you know, the stuff of nightmares, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's the uniform, I think. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, yeah, the incredible and, and dangerous stuff that they did back then. Very dangerous. How Very. did they get uh, him to do that in the movie? Or didn't he do that? No, he didn't do the jump. I mean, you know, that famously, that's Bud Eakins doing the jump, isn't it? Right, who was uh, Steve McQueen's stuntman. So it was Steve yeah. McQueen's stuntman. And I think he would have had a go, you know. I think that he would absolutely would have had a go at it. But there's no way they're going to, Hollywood's going to ensure a... Uh, you know, a, a movie star that stature to jump, you know, that high, that far, and that fast. Yeah. You know? uh, but I think the o the only reason he probably did the film, or so I believe, is that because they put that, you know, John Sturges, the director, put right. that that scene in. So, what's your uh, next film coming out, or do you have any projects coming out or released? Yeah, I have a film coming out in September. It's called The King of Thieves. It's about the Hatton Garden heist. It's kind of a famous heist that happened in over the Easter weekend. About three or four years ago. Uh, Are you riding a motorcycle in there? No, I'm driving a police car. Oh, right. Who were you working with? Uh, well, in the movie, uh, I arrest Michael Caine, and um, there's Ray Winston's in it, and Paul Whitehouse, and uh, Michael Gambon, and it's a sort of all-star, old cast, oh, nice. really. They're all great, yeah. It's Fantastic. Tom Courtney. In fact, it should be called Knights in Hatton Garden, because they're all knighted. All so what about any, uh, the, the next job you've got coming up? What uh, yeah, that? I'm off to uh, I'm off to Covent Garden, to the Donmar Warehouse, to do uh, some Shakespeare. I'm doing a measure oh, for measure. Doing some Shakespeare. So Bardock is doing some of the Bard. That's it. That's amazing. So what character are you playing in that? I play a character called Lucio. Yeah. Do you know the play? Uh, yeah, it's by William Shakespeare. I know that well. And do you remember any of your, have you been learning your lessons? Well, I've been learning them, but whether I remember them, well, um, Could you give us a little taste of well, a few a little, of them? I have a little speech that starts, um, <clears throat> The Duke is very strangely gone from hence, and with full line of his authority governs Angela. The man whose blood is very snow broth. Nice. One who never feels. Giving fear to liberty. He has picked out an act. Hang on, hang on. Giving fear to liberty, he hath picked out an act under whose heavy sense your brother's life falls into forfeit. Your tax is here. Arrest him! That one is close! A letter of the law to make him a son. Matt. All hope is okay, gone! Got it. You have. got it, thanks. Matt Bardock, you've been amazing. Thanks so much for coming today. Lovely to have you. <laughs>